Hello everyone, and welcome to another episode of the Toasted Tale podcast. My name is Jim, and today we're going to look into the humble fox, and what happens when it says one thing, but does the other. If you like stories, then you've come to the right place. On the Toasted Tale podcast, we look into interesting subjects that are either randomised or a hot-button topic impacting us today. We don't report news on this channel. Rather, we try to find the interesting nuggets of story in the events happening all around us. And I think in every subject there is a story worth listening to. After all, I'm confident that There is interesting things to be found in every subject. They just need to be found and shared in a way in which we can all find enjoyable. Have you ever heard anyone be described as sly as a fox? Now, foxes traditionally, they're they're quite shy. They don't like getting into bother. But culturally, there is this idea that they are sly and clever bordering on to the point of being deceitful. Now, is this true? Well, they surely are sneaky hunters, stalking their prey alone, paying extra attention not to be caught out by humans or their prey, making sure that they are quiet enough, very discreet, in order to hunt their next meal. In truth, these are just hunting tactics by the small mammal, and not a conscious effort to behave one way or the other. But it is interesting, and made me draw the comparison last week when I read an article about Fox News Network in the USA, who sent a memo to all of their employees, saying that because of the ongoing coronavirus pandemic, all staffers for Fox will need to be fully vaccinated or have to comply with daily coronavirus tests. This is really interesting because, as you may be aware, different news outlets around the world have different opinions on social issues. Therefore, bias and spin can often come into their reporting and the way they tell their new stories may be aimed towards their intended audience. Now if you were to ask them, then they would probably say that they are speaking the truth. And this is from all outlets across the spectrum, all the way from the most left-leaning newspaper to the most right-wing television station. They would probably stand firm and say that we are reporting the real truth here. Now, Fox News caters to a more conservative audience base, and so have been accused by their opponents of pandering to their audience's views rather than telling the news stories in an unbiased way. As a business, this makes sense. The more loyal and numerous your audience is, the more people that are going to watch the adverts in between your shows and the more money you'll make. Now, COVID and its vaccine has become a very politicized issue throughout the world, but also very strongly in America. And the decision whether to vaccinate yourself or not has polarized people, put them on either side of battle lines. Now, there are many examples that you could look up online or video footage of Fox News anchors casting doubt over the safety of the vaccine, whether it's worth getting, or even over the legitimacy of the pandemic itself. This then opens up the door to a very interesting dichotomy, and makes me ask, why if more than 90% of Fox Corporation staff are inoculated for the coronavirus, are they allowing news anchors on the channel to discredit it. We've all had experiences of people in power saying one thing and doing the other. But this feels different. It feels really unfair when 
you may be asked to lock down, not leave your house only for essentials, when someone who has been telling you to do this then goes out and visits their second home somewhere, or goes to lunch with a friend. It's almost like they are enjoying the benefits without having to sacrifice, but saying all of the right words in order to gain the moral high ground. In Fox's case, however, they must acknowledge that the COVID vaccine is safe and has benefit to its workers, because they've all got it. So why are they spreading information that may harm their viewers? In this episode, I want to answer why people say one thing, but then expect others to do differently. I don't know about you, but I really hate a double standard. If someone in a leadership position tells me to do one thing, and then acts in the complete opposite way, it not only makes me not want to follow their rules, But it also makes me angry. One rule for me, another for thee. And I'm sure this dynamic has been in play since humans first started talking and walking on two feet. But it's been very noticeable during the coronavirus pandemic. In Scotland, their chief medical officer, Dr. Catherine Calderwood, was forced to resign after the press discovered that during lockdown she had made two separate trips to her second home, an hour's drive away from her family home in Edinburgh. Another example was in New Zealand, where the health minister, Dr David Clark, was demoted after he broke national lockdown rules, in order to take his family to the beach. And in South Africa, a minister was suspended after being photographed having lunch with a friend. Many people during the last two years have been willing to sacrifice for the greater good. When the integrity of the people asking you to sacrifice is broken, however, it's very difficult to win people back on side. So why do these groups of people who probably truly believe in the message they're telling the public go against their own advice? Sure, some people may just feel like they can get away with it, but most do see themselves as virtuous. After all, none of us want to feel like we're the bad guy. And where these contradictions come in is all down to the different stakeholders we have in our lives. Now, we as individuals know how difficult it can be trying to balance the wants and needs of everyone in our lives. Most of us live quite simply, with only a few people who want our time, energy, and action. One of the major reasons that a lot of people don't trust politicians is that they have to balance a large amount of stakeholders. It is a common occurrence for people to want different things. And so a politician will have one constituent wanting a certain policy promoted, and another wanting the complete opposite. It's a fine line trying to satisfy both parties, but the way they often can do this is on one hand with talk, and on the other hand with action. This way it looks like you're supporting both, even though each different side contradicts the other. Now, if you'd asked me before the coronavirus pandemic ravaged the world whether politicians, celebrities, people with power would have been able to unite with one voice and not live a contradictory life, then if you'd caught me in a particularly optimistic state of mind, I may have said that, hey, everyone will come together, we will unite against this global threat. I would have made this argument because they were only then serving one audience, the public. But if we take a closer look at the different stakeholders that were at play with those individuals who have been caught out and fired or demoted due to breaking Covid rules, then it's not just the public that they have got to think about. Yes, sure, 
the people they are trying to persuade to follow certain guidelines are a big stakeholder, but also their family is a very important stakeholder. And friends, their place of work even. And we forget that these people are human too, and whilst what they did feels wrong from the outside, their reasoning can be explained by the different forces in their lives dragging them in different ways. As I mentioned as well, most people view their actions as being virtuous. Whether it is a scientist giving advice on the coronavirus, or a news anchor for Fox News, in order to get up in the morning and work as hard as they do for what they believe in, they need to feel as if they are in the right. So in their day-to-day -day work, for their causes, they are able to stockpile virtue. Psychologists studying this see this banked virtue as a literal weight to counterbalance other actions that may be taken. In this regard, individuals who enthusiastically support one certain idea may find themselves more likely to go against those very ideas in private and justify it by the amount of work they've done to support the cause publicly. Why then does the Fox News Corporation allow and support its broadcasters in discrediting the COVID vaccination and underselling the dangers of the pandemic itself, then turn around and effectively mandate that all employees for the company be vaccinated? Well, it may boil down to the fact that they believe that those who don't want to take the vaccine are in their rights to do so, and that providing content for their audience base who support this is still crucial. They are also probably keenly aware that without their audience and viewership, they wouldn't be able to pay their employees' salaries, the operational costs of the studio, and all the other outgoings the company might be spending money on. Therefore, giving the very important stakeholder, which is the audience, what they want, may be too powerful to ignore. Finally, those who work for Fox must believe that what they're putting out is important and necessary. Therefore, in their minds, all the good that the network has done over the years, and what these news anchors have provided for the people of their nation, will off-balance them getting vaccinated, even if previously they have said differently to their supporters. Thank you everyone for tuning in to the Toasted Tale podcast today. I really appreciate you all listening. What do you think about a news organisation like Fox News saying one thing and then doing the other? For those who believe that vaccinations are the way out of this pandemic and that people are a lot safer being vaccinated then it may feel that Fox is playing a very dangerous game with its own audience. And for those who support Fox News' message, there must be a degree of betrayal when you find out that they've been talking the talk and they're behind closed doors doing the exact thing they've rallied against. I would love to know all of your thoughts in the comments below. If you enjoy listening to the Toasted Tale podcast, then you can follow me on Twitter and Facebook. My handle is at Podcast Tale, and it's on there where we post new episodes every Tuesday, and also anything interesting I find while researching. Once again, that's at Podcast Tale for more. If you want to support the show further, then you can do so by liking, sharing, and commenting on this episode. You can also subscribe to the Toasted Tale podcast on whichever platform you get your podcasts from to be kept up to date with new episodes. Thank you once again for listening to today's Toasted Tale podcast. 
I really enjoy learning about new subjects like this, and doing it alongside you is really special. I hope you have a lovely rest of day and find success in all you try. I've been Jim, and I'll speak to you again soon for another Toasted Tale by the Fireside.